podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Hi and welcome to 49 Unbeaten, the official Arsenal Babel podcast. Uh, joined again by Josh and Ben, we've got the old crew back and we're going to be previewing a game. It's been a while, lads, it's been a while. Um, we're going to be previewing our, our trip to, um, our short trip, uh, trip to Brentford. Um, and we're going to be playing the first game of the season, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this Friday at the time of recording, that's tomorrow. Um, so starting to get excited. Well, I am. I don't know about you lads. We'll find out as the episode goes on. But just to kind of get a brief understanding on how you lads are feeling. Uh, Josh, how are you feeling ahead of this one? Uh, the 2021-22 uh, campaign. How are you feeling, mate? Uh, indifferent. It's good to have football back, Arsenal back. Premier League football back. It sort of enjoyed the Euros, but then that time off was a bit bit dull. But then I first time I can remember, obviously in my life, that we've not had European football sort of grown up going to yeah. Champions League nights and enjoying it. More recently, obviously, watching us in the Europa League. But we've, we've not got anything. We're sort of quite boring Thursday nights now for Arsenal fans. Um, so I don't know. Hope I, I, I really hope we can push fifth or sixth. I think that needs to be the realistic aim, but preparing up myself for another season of hurt and heartbreak when it comes to Arsenal. I mean, hopefully not, mate. But um, Ben, how, <laughs> how are you feeling? How are you feeling more specifically about facing Brentford um, uh, tomorrow? Um, I think apart from sort of Man City, Man United, Liverpool, and Chelsea. Probably one of the hardest games we could get, I think. I think promoters as always want to start either with a really easy game against one of themselves or against one of the big boys. Uh, and I think going away to Brentford, I think they play some exciting football. I really have liked the look of them sort of following the championship for the last couple of years. Um, hard. I missed out only just the last couple of years. I think they deserve it. And they'll be right up for it. And they'll put us to the test. They really will. And it's... I don't think it'd be an easy game. I don't think... I think if we would have played someone like Norwich, I think everyone would have fancied us. I, I don't know whether it's the same feeling this time around. Mm, yeah. People forget it's a massive occasion for Brentford. Um, if you look into it, Brentford, this is their first game back in top flight football in 74 years. And um, I don't know if you boys can guess, but the last game they played in top flight football in 1947, have a little guess who their final game was before they uh, went down. Probably beat us 1-0 or something, didn't they? No, we beat them 1-0. Ah, fair which, uh, Yeah, sent them down. So, um, again, I guess it suits the occasion. They get a chance to um, potentially get one back at us. I know it's been 74 years, but um, still time for revenge. But, Ben, how are you feeling about this one, mate? How are you feeling about uh, facing the bees? I don't know, to be honest. I think, as Josh says, they'll be right up for it. And um, it's going to be the first time back in their stadium. It's going to be the first time with fans back in the stadium for, what, two years, the best part of. They obviously had some at Wembley for the playoff final, but then this is going to be, I assume the atmosphere is just going to be raucous because, as Josh says, first time back, 74 years on, full stadium. They've got Arsenal under the lights, kicking off the Premier League season. It's all set up for us to lose, you know, 2-1, 1-0, something like that. <laughs> but I think at the same time, I would rather play Brentford than I would like a, a Norwich or I um, can't remember the other team that came up was. Watford. Watford's, yeah. it's, it's, honestly, it's been that long. So much European <laughs> football I've, I've forgotten. Um, but yeah, I'd rather play Brentford, I think, because exciting football, as we found out in the past, can often lead to giving up a lot of good chances. And we're not very good at creating chances mm, if we're, yeah. you know, if teams just sit in against us. So hopefully Brentford will give us some opportunities to at least test their goalie. Mm, definitely. And you talk about exciting football. They've definitely got a very exciting footballer in Ivan Tony, um, a young English talent, uh, a striker, centre forward. Is he someone we've got to be wary of um, on Friday night, Josh? I mean, if you go based on his form at, at Brentford and at uh, Peterborough, I think you have to be wary of him. But Premier League football is a very different beast than EFL football. And we sort of saw that with Timu Puki. He sort of scored a lot of goals, had a great start to his Premier League career and then sort of tailed off a couple of years ago. So I think you have to, I think you've got to look behind him and some of the players they've got to play him through. He's, he's going to be a danger. Um, be interesting to see how he steps up against our new centre-back. 
Um, I th- I, he's always a worry, isn't he? And he's he's a great finisher. So of course you've got to be worried about someone centre forward, especially when they scored thirty goals or something last season, whatever it was. Um, so yeah, but we were linked with him, weren't we? This summer we sort of very early on we were linked with with him. He's an Arsenal fan. Uh, we looked like we needed a new strike, and it was it was a couple of links. Nothing obviously came of it. So I think he'll be right up for it against his boyhood club. Yeah, definitely. Ben, do you think Ivan Tony's someone to to watch out for, or do you think Brentford's uh, threats come in uh, other people? Well, no, I mean, you, you can't really dis- disagree with the number of goals he scored. Um, it's a bit like... He like won last season, something like that. So Yeah, he broke the championship scoring record, didn't he? Yes, yeah. Um, what I will say is it reminds me a bit of... Do you remember Tammy Abraham at Villa? Yeah. Was three seasons ago. Uh, I think he got 24. And they've got this... They share the same characteristic in the need of them, I don't think, scoring from outside the box. Um, which is quite interesting. Obviously, now we're linked with Tammy Abraham. As Josh said, we were linked with Ivan Tony. A couple of... Uh, couple of months ago maybe yeah, right at the start of the early on. Um, and he's definitely one to watch but they've got you know Brian and Buemo is a very good player very skillful um, they'll be I think they'll be without Josh De Silva for a while which is I believe he's out of a hip injury for this game so he won't yeah. get to, to probably score against us if he was playing Pro- probably for the best but um, they're a very exciting team I can't have, have you know I have to admit I haven't watched that much of them mm. but what I have seen I have enjoyed and I, you know I think they'll be a very Welcome addition to the Premier League. Mm, yeah, they play a very kind of exciting style of football. I remember watching um, their run up, uh, run up to the playoff final. They played uh, Bournemouth in a game, which was, I remember just seeing it. It was a crazy game. There were red cards, there were goals. Um, and then obviously the final, playoff final, I believe they beat Swansea 2-0. Um, so Brentford will be an exciting um Exciting matchup, and there could there could be goals in this game. Is the way I feel about it. It'll probably be a one 0 now. I've said it, but um, I think there could be goals in this game. We'll get your predictions in later. Um, but just to kind of look into um, the game a bit more in itself. Obviously, you touched on it earlier. We've got fans back um, in the stadium. There will be some Arsenal travelling fans for the first time in probably or away fans probably in about a couple of years um, at a game. Um, how much of an impact, Josh, do you think the fans will have on this game? I think enormous. And I think, especially English fans, you could see how the Euros, it really, for the most part, worked in our favour. And it was good to see fans back in the stadiums. And um, it really spurred it on. And I think that spirit of, of the tournament really helped. Um, I don't know, obviously, playing away, we won't have a, the biggest support. I don't Are away fans allowed back in yet? I'm not. Yeah, you know, so, yeah. the away section sold out for this game. So I think we'll have, we'll probably have about a thousand. I think I don't really know the capacity of Brentford Stadium. Um, I hope, I hope it drives us on. Thousand, I'd say. I'd say you'd probably be looking at about maybe two and a half thousand. Yeah. So I, I hope it's, I hope it's positive. But as we've sort of covered, Brentford's first game in their new stadium in front of fans, uh, Premier League for the first time in well, top division for the first time in 74 years. Uh, and I I think it was spur Brentford on a lot more than it sort of our away support, or as good as it is, um, will have an effect on us. So it'd be great to see live football with Premier League football with fans back in the ground. Um, but obviously as a home game, it'd be much to the benefit of, of Brentford than it will be for us. Yeah, definitely. Fans back in the ground, Ben, do you reckon that's going to um, spur us on to get the result or do you reckon the, the Brentford fans could be a bit overwhelming because I mean these players haven't had full stadiums and even in these games they haven't had full stadiums in in probably in about two years now since I think the last Arsenal home game of a full stadium was that West Ham game when Meza Ozil was still an Arsenal player and got uh, an assist um, so do you reckon some of these players could actually full on just fold under the pressure and it, it could just be too much for some people or do you think um people should be okay with this? I mean, I, I think it's certainly a possibility, but I think that, you know, every every game you looked at last season, even if Sky or BT did their best to try and have, you know, the soundtracks, <laughs> the, fan, the fans the fans make those football games, you know, those moments where the reaction is immediate. It's not someone pressing, you know, play on a, on a mix board or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Um, so, you know, the fans go back is going to be great for football. It's going to be great for Premier League football. And I think most of the players will be very grateful to have them back as opposed to sort of not because, you know, playing in, 
but they don't even have like the sound so it's just literally playing in an empty stadium it must be so disheartening mm. to you know watch you know, like like watch your teammates playing in an empty stadium no recognition for anything and i can imagine that some of the players you know a bamyang for example is one i think will really enjoy having the fans back mm. nicolas pepe too i think they're both players that you know thrive off the back of fan um fans being there and being able to spur them on so i think that while there's a risk of it i think probably the players will rise to the occasion more than anything mm, yeah and also just on on kind of uh this first game we've had a obviously pre-season i mean our reaction to pre-season has just been it's been horrible really it's been extremely underwhelming and um do we read too much into that ben like pre-season do we read too much into the the bad results i know we we had some um dodgy results in scotland and then we had two um, more convincing games behind closed doors where we're like, okay, maybe we're starting to pick up here. And then we lost to Chelsea and Spurs in the Mind series. Do we read too much into that or is that an actual worry going into this first game? I think it's a mixture of both. I think that a lot of fans will read into too much the results, you know. I mean, Bayern Munich, I think, have lost or draw. I don't think they've won a pre-season game yet. Um, so, you know, there's, we're in good company at least. Um <laughs> But I think that a lot of fans read into the results and say, you know, that's bad. But what worries me is more performances as opposed to the results. Like, I could take losing to Spurs if we were the better team and, you know, um, dominated them for 85 minutes and they got one lucky shot and it went in. But the truth is, they could have scored three or four. We didn't particularly look threatening. And I get that, you know, it's minutes under the, minutes under the belt. But we've been saying for 18 months, you know, Arteta needs a full preseason. We'll give them a full preseason, whatever. And I don't think we're seeing any significant changes, especially in sort of tactical tweaks compared to how it used to be, even with a full preseason, which is what worries me more than the results. Josh, I know you're very um sometimes you can go a bit down the doom and gloom path of these things, and you can um be despairing in moments, I think is um a good way to put it. But um, are you not worrying too much? I mean, you probably are worrying, but are you, how are you feeling then after these uh, pre-season results we've had? Um, I don't know. You sort of look at it and you're sort of pre-season is meant to warm up the real thing. And I mean, if, I remember a few years ago, we beat PSG, we beat Bayern Munich in an international tournament. I think it was in the States or in Singapore, something like that. Um, mm. And if we got really excited. I think that might have been our first year without Champions League football, the season that came after that. So yeah. it's, it's hard to read into, but when you look at it, we're sort of playing teams of our calibre and that opponents we'd be expecting to face across the season. Mm. Sort of Rangers won their league, sort of doing well in Scotland, but Scottish teams never really recently have progressed into um, Champions League. So typically that would be a team we might, the standard team we'd face in the Europa League. Um, didn't get results we wanted, lost to Burnian, who, again, are under that calibre that we think or we should be at. Um Watford Premier League opponent, beat them fine. Millwall Championship opponent, okay, should be beating them, did. And then uh, probably our two biggest London rivals, we lost to and we struggled against. Yeah. So it it's a fair assessment of our, our pre-season campaign that it wasn't where we wanted it to be. And I think you've got to read into it. I know some games were at the training ground, some games weren't. It, it's worrying. It is. It, it has to be, and I think... I think although it's all pre-season, it's getting minutes and warm-up. It's it is worrying, and if we can't get a good pre-season under our belts, it doesn't show us up for the best best of chances in the league. But again, it's not like we played twenty pre-season games against every team in the Premier League and mm-hmm. sort of had a practice run at it almost. So you never know. But I'm not the most confident going into it. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna move on now. Um, we're gonna talk about the um, starting eleven with just a bit of team news, really. Um, the only three people we talk about here: uh, Thomas Partey, um, Arsenal confirmed he's going to be out until the end of the month with an ankle injury. Uh, it's like ligament damage, I think Arsenal said. Um, so at the end of the month, he'll be back in training, and hopefully, I think for our sake, because the sooner he's back in the side, the better. But I mean, I guess it is a chance for Sambi Lokonga to. <clears throat> excuse me, to go on and make a stake a claim to Arteta to say, look, I'm good enough to play in the team. Um, Eddie and Ketia picked up an injury in the same game. Chelsea were really going in for us this game. Um, <laughs> I mean, so were Spurs. 
did that challenge Deli Ali put in on Pepe? Pepe. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that was a red card in the Premier League. You think? I think he, yeah, he should be sent off for that in the Premier League. Okay. With VAR, that, that would have been a red card in the Premier League. Okay. That was a horrible. Time. Well, yeah. Um, Eddie's got an injury um, out to um, September, early September, he'll return. And Gabriel, after his injury at the Olympics, which he didn't even play, unfortunately, I feel sorry for him. He went all the way out there and then picked up an injury, I believe, um, in the training camps. So uh, Gabriel will also be back early September. Um, but we're going to put ourselves in the mindset of Mikel Arteta right now. Um, three brains combined. Can we... Um, I think we'll all kind of be pretty... Um, in agreement on this one. Um, but we're going to talk about the um, starting 11 for the Brentford game, what we feel the starting 11 should be. Um, so, lads, if you are ready, we're going to kick things off with goalkeeper. I don't think there's many arguments to be had here. Alex Renaton hasn't exactly staked a claim to be our number one, but um, I think Burn Leno and goal is uh, the right place to start. Yeah, yeah. easy enough. We don't have sort of any other first team level keepers when Arsenal's. Miles away and um, Oconquo's only just been promoted. So, unless, unless, unless there's a major injury today uh, or in the warm up tomorrow, it, it has to be Leno. It is criminal as well that we haven't signed a backup goalie, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely criminal, given we but, knew from about <laughs> when When was the Man City game? The Cairo Cup game? That must have been February ish. No, it was, it was. That was the new year, wasn't it? It was in the new year. So we've known since then that we needed a backup goalie. And we knew if we, if we knew we weren't going to be extending Matt Ryan's contracts, mm. yeah. we, we've known for so long. And the way that they've handled the whole Ramsdale thing is a joke. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, as you say, there isn't really a choice. And if Leno gets injured in the first half or, you know, 60 minutes, I genuinely don't know what we'll do. <laughs> Put a bammy angle. Um, yes, no, no, I, I agree with you on that one. I think it is criminal that we haven't signed a backup goalkeeper. I would have, I've, I loved Matt Ryan. I thought he was a perfect backup goalkeeper. He was an Arsenal boy. You could tell um, he said he supported the club when he lived in Australia. He'd stay up and watch the game. So um, I think he, he was absolutely spot on for that kind of role. And if, he, if Leno got injured, I would have all faith in Matt Ryan to do a good enough job to step in. But he moved on, went to Real Sociedad. His, um, his interview was quite interesting. He was sort yeah, of saying that he asked about it. He wanted to come back to Arsenal, and the impression him and his agent, him and his agent got was that they wanted someone homegrown. Um, mm. Probably hence why we haven't gone and got an Arnhem when he's available for about eight million quid. So yeah. I, mm. I, I, it's worrying when you're going and looking at sort of no disrespect to him. I think he's a fine keeper, but uh, Ramsdale's been relegated twice in two years. Um, Sam Johnson's. 28, you don't really want someone like that competing for a... I mean, he's fine, but again, it's it's not that... 10 million big. pounds as well for Johnston, which is a lot of money for a, a backup 28-year-old goalkeeper, I guess. I guess I mean, Freddie Fred Woodman would be linked to. There's been a lot, but I don't get the homegrown quota thing. I really if don't. We, I mean, if we got, need another homegrown player in the squad, sign um, Onana and then get Madison to sign the thing as well. It's as simple as that. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk. We're going to say so. We say Leno and goal. We don't really have any choice there with that. Um, yeah. Right back, we have, I guess, a little bit of a debate here. We can go for the English Cafu. Me and Ben were talking about this earlier. Um, the English Cafu, Callum Chambers, um, Cedric Suarez, or Hector Bellerin, who is still here um, despite being linked with a move away. Um, ben, who, who would you look to to start in that right back role? Um. I think he'll probably start the season with Cedric. Um, okay. I I personally would like to see Maitland Niles put back there. Yeah. Um, okay. I think he's a very good. Op- I think if he if he accepts that his future at Arsenal is going to be a right back, which I don't think he will, which is the problem, obviously. Um, then he'd be a very very good right back for us. He'd probably save us, you know, twenty mil, twenty five mil. Um, but given that he seems to want a career away from Arsenal in central midfield. Uh, probably Cedric is who I'd go for. Um, yeah. I just don't. I don't. I don't like Chambers at right back. Okay. Just I. I every time we play, it gives me flashbacks to Swansea when he was absolutely skinned by Jefferson Montero over and over. 
Um, and it always, like, especially if he's next to, I mean, Ben White's a bit better, but when he was next to holding, it was just like watching two elephants try and defend. <laughs> I, I don't mind Chambers at right back. I think he does a solid enough job. I think Cedric and Chambers are both solid backups, but they shouldn't be the starters um, in that squad, uh, in the team, sorry. Uh, Josh? Um, similarly to Ben, I think it would be Bellerin who starts the season. Oh, really? Um, I, I just have a, I have a funny feeling that there's there must have been a reason why he, he played in that Mind Series game ahead of Cedric. Uh, I know Chambers came on, or whatever, whatever way around it was, there was a reason that he was playing and Cedric wasn't. Um, so I have a funny feeling that he's going to do the same thing and he's going to start Bellerin. Uh, personally, I'd love, I, I really like Callum Chambers. I've really liked him since he signed. Um, I think it's just one of those players that sort of you have a initial sort of like affiliation with. And he was a player I've really liked since he's been here. Um, I know he's gone out on loan. There's been a, a couple of games where he's made crucial mistakes and really horrible errors. Um, but I really like him. And I think he proved at the end of the last season why, why he was playing. He was putting some good crosses in. And I don't know. It's, it's just something different, isn't it? We don't have a better option. So <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd love for it to be Chambers. I have a sneaking suspicion it would be better in. I, I, I mean, I know we're going to have to agree here, but I, I, I think Chambers will start. I, I don't see... Cedric starting because of the way that he's not he's not started anything. I know there's been a lot of talk of he's been bulking up, and I know the Athletic have written stories on the fact that everyone's been very impressed with Cedric preseason. Um, I don't think Bellerin will start. Um, Maitland Niles definitely won't start. I reckon I reckon it would be Chambers, but we're we're gonna have to agree here, lads. Who, who do we think? I love, I love the fact that we have to agree. We've named four different right backs. <laughs> <laughs> we have four. We've named all four. Of them. Mm-hmm. I think I think two of us have both sort of put Chambers in our one or two. Um, so I, I think... Yeah, I, think well, I mean, I don't... I, I, I don't know enough about Brentford to know whether that'll be a bad thing. Um, I don't know who they've got on the left flank that might be particularly dangerous. Um, so I'm happy to go for him. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think go go for Chambers, but I don't think it's a unanimous. I, I have I have to say as well, Josh, you have some very very odd like affiliations with players, whether it's <laughs> Chambers or Torreira. Can you choose like a good player? <laughs> That's harsh. That's very hard. And Jens Lehmann, who met the swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I saw Rob holding outside of Morrison's recently, so so he's, that is the next story. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to the centre back partnership. Hopefully, this is a bit easier. Um, we'll go. We'll go for the pairing. Um, I'm going to kick it off. I'm going to say I reckon. Well, I'm going to say White and Pablo Mari because I think that's what he's going to go with. Um, the, the right. That's what I go with as well. To be fair. Yeah, right footed and left footed centre back. Josh, you're shaking your head already. <laughs> um, yeah, I I think White starts. I I'm just not a fan of Mari. There's something about him. I'm- in that in the Tottenham game, he it was him that was very much at fault for Son's goal because he I, I don't know what he was doing to be honest. Uh, I mean, for me, it's it's white and holding. Um, but I tell you, I tell you I think, what, as you go down the pecking they just get worse and worse, don't they? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll say we'll say white and marry just because I really do think that's what. Um, yeah, I think I think that's what just because so balance and. You've got the right footed and the left footed centre back. Um, it would be interesting when Gabriel comes back to see if he still goes with that or if he goes with White and Gabriel. I just really hope that he doesn't try and play a high line because <laughs> Pablo Mari Pablo Mari looks like he looked fine last season. He reminds me, sort of, yeah. He reminds me of Mertes in ways like he's not a he's really not a fast player. Um, he's not as tall as well as Mertes but he's um. His kind of ability to judge situations and to prepare himself and get himself in the right areas does seem to get himself out of jail a lot of times. Um, so we've gone for Callum Chambers, Ben White, and Pablo Mari. Um, left just, back. Just a caveat: we are assuming he's playing a back four. I know, like, yes. there's been talk that like, right now. No, no, <laughs> there has. I have seen stuff that he might he might go to go to a five. 
Which I really don't. Why have you not played a five at all all preseason? If he's no, I don't want it to happen. I don't think it will. But I've seen a couple of a couple of bits about it. So I think I think we you just you just really want Rob Holding in the defence, don't you? No, I'm really <laughs> I'm really hoping to go for a back four. I think he will, but mm. and that's why we're basing it on a back four. But you never know. He might spring a surprise and been been doing about five in training. So well, we we're, we're gonna. We're going to go for a four-two-three-one here, lads, just to clear up what. Yeah, that's what I've that's what I've gone for as well. Four-two-three-one. Um, left back, Kieran Tierney. No, no question. No. Um, we've now got the the centre mid uh, partnership. Um, this might have been a bit more of a debate if we had all our midfielders fit, but unfortunately, uh, Partey is out until the end of the month uh, minimum. Um, so we've only really got Shaka. Uh, Lukonga and El Neni to pick from. We're not including Torreira in this, Josh. I'm afraid. Um, I, I guess you could put Maitland Niles in the conversation as well. For um, I've already picked my right back. I can't pick him the DM as well. <laughs> um, so the mid the midfield partnership will start with Ben. Who are you going to go with? Um, who who would you pick for that? Who would I pick? I would pick Lukonga and Jacka. Arteta is ninety percent certain to pick El Neni and Jacka. <laughs> Do you, do you honestly think no? Because he started Lokonga and Shaka in the um, Tottenham game. I just think yeah. Lokonga won't get his first taste. I think he'll probably come off the bench. I'd, I'd expect him to play the first hour. Because I, I, I just don't think we're forward thinking enough to play Lokonga um, going away to Brentford. I think we'll be quite respectful. So I think El Neni will probably come in and play, which is, I think, a shame. I just... Josh, are you in agreement, sir? Uh, I I think I think Elneny starts, and I think Xhaka inevitably plays because he's our most experienced midfielder. Mm. Um, I mean, I put down the Conga and Xhaka uh, only on the basis I don't think Lucas Torreira is in the country. Because um, I know I, I, I genuinely think we should give him a chance unless we get a decent offer. In. I know Lazio are interested, but I I I I love him. He's, he, I just really do. Um, so. Josh, I pre- Luke, Lucas Herrera had a good time here, Josh, but I genuinely... We need to move on, Josh. Like, his so his I, I, career's I been over for like two seasons. I don't think he's in the country, so I don't think he's actually eligible to play. Uh, but I agree with Ben. I think... season with any kind of team, so it, it's, a, it's an extremely co- confusing conversation. And the fact that in three weeks' time, Lucas Herrera could still be an Arsenal player remains like kind of just a shock to me. I, um, I, I honestly do think he'll he'll end up going to Lazio. Uh, he's wanted to return. I, I hope so for his sake. And I yeah, mean, I think he's wanted to return to a country that he's used to, and he's he did very well in Italy. That's why we signed him. Yeah, from, yeah, um, Italy, yeah, he came from Sampdoria. Yeah. Uh, no, I I think he'll go for El Neni and Jaka. I really mm. hope he goes for Lukonga or Sambi, as he prefers to be called. Um, yeah. But I mean, yeah, I, I think I think it'll be El Neni. Okay. Um, are we going to go? We're going to go with what we think will happen or what we want to happen, and we're not including Torreira. No, uh, let's go for our let's go for our team that we would play. So Shaka and Lakonga. We'll go for Shaka and Lakonga. Okay. So then, in front of them, we've got the the three kind of creative, um, well, the creative um, ten, and then you've got the two kind of wingers. Um, obviously, there's there's a bit of a debate to be had on the left hand side, but. In the 10, a Mill Smith row, any arguments there? Easy. No, there's no one else to play there, quite simply. Yeah, I mean, you can Williams put in the country, isn't it? Oh, don't even get me started. <laughs> no, no, there's no other natural set of second midfielder. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Smith row in that 10. Yep. Um, the right hand side, Pepe? Yep. Ben? I don't know. I, th- I, I would like to see Pepe. I think if. I think if Aubameyang plays on the left, I think he'll probably play Saka on the right. You think? Um, yeah, I just... I think for Pepe and Aubameyang both do sort of the same thing. And in Emil smith row, you don't have enough ball retention and um, creativity. I think that Arteta likes to sort of have two creators and two finishers, and Aubameyang will probably play because he's the club captain, which means I think Pepe will probably drop to the bench. I don't, I don't like it, but I think that's that's what I think might happen. I think, I think Pepe will start. I think Saka's still not going to be up to one hundred percent fitness. I know he took time off. I think mm, that's true. Um, I think Pepe, he's had a full a full preseason. He's going to be the one that's 
Sharper. Yeah. So, I mean, it's exactly. quite possible, yeah. Might come on and make a cameo. So I'd, I'd take Pepe on the right-hand side. Josh, who would you go for? I had Pepe down on the right. I, I completely forgot that Saka uh, returned late because of Euros and holiday. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had I, I had Pepe on the right anyway, but I did I did forget that Saka might not be match ready. Mm, okay, um, the left hand side. This is I know I think we all know what we think will happen. I think Abamian will start on the left hand side. Yep. But you've got the argument. You've got the argument for um, Saka to play there. Gabriel Martinelli is back in the squad. Um, Willian, yeah. Um, Reese Nelson. That's another name that could play on the right as well. Um, I don't know what's happening with Nelson. It'll be interesting to see. I hope he gets a loan move because he just needs to play football. He needs to play 20 games in a season at least. Um, and I really want to see Nelson go on. And I do think he's a, a player that could have a future with us if he gets that game time. Um, but in regards to um, the left-hand side, um, who, who are we going for? Who do, who do we want to see on the left-hand side, Josh? Uh, I did have Saka in there when I did my team, um, but again, like I said, I, mm. I it completely passed me by that he he re- he didn't have a full preseason. He did return later from Euros, and then he got the extended holiday. Um, so I don't think he will. I I uh, I think about me young plays, and yeah. I think when you're missing Saka and Martinelli, um, and William doesn't get anywhere near the team. It might for me. I really just don't want him there. If we're playing Pepe on the right, um, Abamian close on the left. Okay, Ben, we we're gonna we're gonna put Abamian in there. Yeah, I think you have to. Okay, yeah, I think I mean he will play to be honest. If you've got a fully fit Saka, then I'd say you probably play Saka there. Um, so got Abamian on the left, Pepe on the right, Smith on the ten, and then the centre forward role. It's our it's our Frenchman. It's our number nine. It's um, Alex Lacazette. Is there anyone else you can put there? Not really. Uh, I mean, you, you've only really, if you're playing a Bami on the left, you've only really got Lacazette and you're not going to, you're not going to play Balogun. No. I get to. Eddie, no, Eddie's injured. He's injured. Oh, he is. Yeah, 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 right. we, we have, we have, we have, we have two. Mm, if we're yeah, playing a Bami on the left, which I think we all, or, or we all are in agreement of, with the current situation, with Martin Ellie just coming back from the Olympics, that only was a few days ago, really. Yeah. Um, has he even had any holiday? I swear he literally won the medal and then came back. The yeah, next I think before. he just came back. He, he so. had all the holiday before the Olympics, didn't he, to be fair to him? Oh, OK, OK. So, yeah, he had his holiday, then played at the Olympics for a week or however long that football tournament was, and then he's back. Um, I don't know whether he'll come into the team, especially at centre-forwards. Mm, so, it, it, it is Lacazette. It will be Lacazette, again, unless there's a, a freak injury or illness or something happens um, then he plays and he starts okay so we'll just go over our team we've gone for uh, we've gone for Leno in goal we've gone Tierney left back uh, Pablo Mari Ben White Callum Chambers Granit Xhaka Lucas Torreira no <laughs> um, Sambi Lokonga um, Pepe on the right Smith Rowe in the 10 Aubameyang on the left and Lacazette up front leave a comment below if you think that's a good team if you think that's what Arteta will go with um, I mean when we release this video it will probably be getting around to close to kickoff kind of time now yeah. um, hopefully we'll be um, a bit of pre-match atmosphere starting to build up looking forward to the game um, we'll get predictions in a second no, actually, actually no we'll go for predictions now um, if, if Arteta plays that team Josh, what's the score going to be? Uh, if if we start with that team, we win two one. Okay. Uh, if if someone like him, then he comes in. Um, I, I just want your prediction for the game. I just let's go two one. I'm, I'm going to say two one Arsenal. Let's 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 let's, let's kick off the season positively. I was going to say, if you predict a draw first game of the season, I was like, this is going to be a long season. So let's let, let let's try and retain some optimism. Uh, yeah. Two one. Definitely, definitely. Ben, prediction? 2-0. Two 2-0? Nil. Two nil. Yeah, I don't... I I mean, we have the third best defence in the league last season, didn't we? Um, oh, last season, though. Yeah, no, it was, it was. But the constituent parts are still there. Ben White's a very good defender. Um, I think we've we've shown a bit of a weakness from set pieces. But mm. I don't think Brentford are particularly good from set pieces. I mean, I could be completely wrong, again. Uh, but nothing suggests to me that they are. 
So I'm going to go with 2-0. Okay, so I, think be, I don't think it'll be comfortable, but I think the result will make it look comfortable. I think this game's going to be op- open floodgates. I think this is going to be, I think there's going to be goals in this game. I'm going to go for 3-2 to Arsenal. Um, but I think this could be a bit of a kind of panic stations moment when it's just trying to outscore the other team. Um, I hope it's not. I hope it's a nice relaxing 2-0 win or something like that. But um, I'm going to say 3-2 uh, to two the Arsenal. Um just kind of to touch on before we end the podcast, who else do we need to bring in? I know, I mean, we kind of all know it's been the subject of discussion and we said about a backup goalkeeper already. But Ben, who do Arsenal and, well, Edu, uh, Vinay and Arteta, who do they need to bring in before that August 31st deadline? Um, I think there are a lot of places they could bring in. You know, we could do with a better right back. We could do with a better striker. Um but I think in terms of need, uh, we definitely need a creative midfielder, whether that be a number eight or a number 10, depending on what formation we go for next season. Mm. Um, we definitely need a backup goalie, as we've already said. And I still think I still think we need another central midfielder. Um, potentially a younger, a younger player. But I think that if you're going to be asking Mohamed Elneny to play more than sort of 15, 20 games next season in all competitions, then you're just asking to drop points. But it's that, it's that simple. There's nothing against the guy. He works very hard, you know. He doesn't take up a lot of wage bill, but he's just, for what Arsenal need, he's just so wrong because he doesn't play the ball forward fast enough and it just completely cuts off players, especially our attacking quarter, who tend to play the best in transition. So it's we need somebody who's going to be able to sort of play the ball forwards quickly, like like Lekonga has been recently, and like Party does when he plays um, for me. So I think there's probably three places we need to strengthen and then two more that we could strengthen. Um, you know, we're not going to get five players in, let's be realistic. But three places we need, need to strengthen. Okay. Josh, where do we need to... Who needs to come in before this uh, the deadline on transfer day? Uh I mean, if you if you give me Eddie's job, I go out and sign James Madison. Uh, I sign Anana. I sign Max Aaron's, and I sign. Uh, I want a centre mid. I'm trying to debate who I think we should go for. Um, Ipasuma and L- Latore Martinez. I go out and sign all five or four. Or not, not much then. Not much then. No, I don't remember who no, I, what no, I, no. how many I said. But again, I agree with Ben. We need someone in that attacking midfield role. If you can only get, so you you give me all those players there. If you can only get choose two of them, who would you choose? She, um, because that's that's probably more realistic as to. I mean, James if we only, Madison, two, if we only get two of them, that would probably be an impressive end to the window. I think that's unlikely. If I'm being honest, I go and get Madison. And I go and get Anana. Okay. I think I think the num- the credit midfield is crucial, and I think we need we need a backup keeper. And I think I know he can't play until November, but some competition for he he can't play until November, and then he's away for a month for Afghan in January. So you might you just you're just back to Ronison. Oh, fine. I go and get Madison, and I go and get. Um, Ramsdale, Ramsdale, Ramsdale. <laughs> no, I don't get Ramsdale. Um, I get Martinez. So I think I'm desperate for a, a proper striker. No oh, offense. I thought like we were talking about Martinez. What? I thought, I thought, thought you meant Emmy. No, Latoro. 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 Um, we, we, but we need. I think we need someone in every position. Almost. I think we're that desperate for. Third. I mean, you should list every position a second ago, to be honest. But I, I, um, I mean, well, I think more importantly, we need to get rid of some dead wood. We need to get rid of some stinkers. Yeah, we need to tell. And we we're, need to we're, tell. we're almost over our over our player capacity now. We're getting to that point. We've signed we've signed players for an already over sort of over sort of over invested squad. We need to get rid of some some players who aren't going to get anywhere near it, the team. Like for me, I get rid of many. I get rid of Klasnach. I get rid of Bellerin. I get rid of Willock's going, Maitland Niles can go out on I, I think I think in fairness we are trying to get rid of Oh no, I, I appreciate yeah, that yeah, yeah. but I mean yeah, but we're never gonna go and get five or six players where we need. I just I don't think that we have the drive or the the ability to go and attract five or six big name players at the moment, just based on their European football. So 
all the time as well, to be honest. We could, all well, the time, yeah. Yeah, the clock is ticking, but um, we're going to wrap the podcast up there. I know Josh kind of ended that with a little bit of a despair rant, but um, we've, we've got time for it here. Um, Arsenal versus Brentford. Um, it is Friday, 8 o'clock kickoff, I believe. Um, so the late kickoff, first game of the Premier League season. It starts here. Um, make sure to have it locked in on Arsenal Ravel's YouTube channel. Uh, drop us a tweet at Arsenal Ravel One. Uh, you can check out all our latest articles, um, all our videos, all of our uh, information on where our content is going to be this season. Uh, make sure to follow all of us down in the description. Uh, drop a like on the video, subscribe, and we'll catch you again very soon um, for a Brentford reaction and hopefully to the first three points of the season. Uh, so cheers, guys, and catch you soon. Find more great shows or join the team at sport-social.co.uk.